Hey guys, I removed one of the spark plugs just to have a look and see the condition. This is cylinder, cylinder number three. So you have one, three, five, seven, two, four, six, eight on the other side. And uh, I just, again, I wanted to have a look, check the overall condition. And anyway, um, as you can see, it's an Adelco plug and it's the R45 TS, which are the, the, the ones recommended by the manufacturer. I also wanted to check the, um, the gap and this one. Seems to be, yep. Seems to be right at um, 0 0.0445, almost 4.5. And again, the condition is pretty good. I had these replaced, of course, when I had the motor rebuilt and uh, and that was about 20, what, 22 or 24,000 miles ago. I know I waited a little bit too long to, uh, to replace them, but as you will find out if you do this, it's a, it's a pain in the butt, but it is doable. So, and it's, it's a good idea to replace, I think the spark plugs every, I'm gonna to try to do it from now on every 10,000 miles. This one looks pretty good. And um, it's a little, seems a little bit melted there, but again, I'm not an expert. This is just the ceramic portion of it. You can see the electrode, everything looks pretty decent. Um, no oil, it's just, actually in really nice condition, but ready to be replaced. So anyway, again, I just wanted to, to show you one of the old plugs. And again, this one has about 22 to 24,000 miles. I think with the new ones, we're gonna have better ignition, better, better starting, um, idling. Let me get a flashlight, see if I can improve this a little bit and see how, how much you can actually see here. So, yeah, it is pretty decent, which is, which is a good sign. Again, you want to make sure that you use the right tools for the job. And this is, um, a 5 8 um, spark plug socket. I don't know if you can see, you probably cannot. Let's see if you can shine some light in there. Yeah, a little bit. You can see the rubber insert. And what that does, if you've never done this, once you get this tool, you can see the resistance as it goes in. And then it'll just hold the plug, which is really nice when you wanna take it out of the engine and then reinstall the new ones uh, or install the new ones. These could be cleaned a little bit, but again, I'm just at about two, under three bucks per plug. It is, um, it is a good idea to just go ahead and replace them. That's pretty snug in there, hump. Never fails, the retainer kind of came off. That just kind of stays in there, supposed to anyway. But, uh, so that's it. Um, and then we'll go over a few other things. Let's see if this will, yeah. We'll go over a few things as far as coating the um, ceramic portion, the porcelain with, um, a little bit of 
uh, dielectric grease and also applying a tiny bit of anti-seize on the threads. So we'll discuss that uh, a little later. Alrighty, that's it for now. Thanks for watching. Okay, so I set up my camera here, my phone, with a little tripod inside the, uh, the engine compartment. I don't know how this is gonna work, but uh, anyway, I already, as I showed you, I, uh, you probably can't see much, but anyway, I, I removed the uh, number three plug and under here is number one. So let's rotate the boot a little bit. Oh, ouch. Of course, along with it came the um, temperature sender uh, connector. So I'm gonna have to reinstall that probably after I'm done here. It's not that difficult. It just kind of snaps in, in place. Yep, I'll do that later. Anyway, ouch. So you wanna get your socket, and of course you have to just kind of feel your, your way into this area here and rotate it a little bit until the the rubber sleeve the retainer allows it to um, go farther in and it gets it hits the um, the hex um, portion of the of the plug now I'm using a little can use a, a ratchet I use a, a, a small breaker bar because it's um, smaller and uh, then if you're lucky you can connect it and and there we go yeah the guys who um, who installed the um, the plugs did it right I mean they're not super tight or anything which is very nice and once you break it free you can start turning it by hand counterclockwise and there she is again these plugs look really really good um which is fantastic. Maybe, maybe it's running a little bit on the lean side because of all the white that you see there. So I'm gonna have to look into that. But otherwise, they look really, really good. And of course I did number one and three, which are the easiest ones to do. Then you have five and seven. I don't know if I can get to those from the top. Hey, anything is possible, but I may just use the, um, my, um, back there you can see the quick jacks and, uh, and work from, from under the car. So anyway, Again, I just wanted to um, to show you the um, number one plug. Again, I'm very happy with how these uh, look. So, just waiting for the new ones to uh, come in the mail today. So, I'll make another video when I when I start. Um, installing new plugs. All right, that's it, guys. Later. So I have all the spark plugs out for the left side of the motor. And uh, to get numbers five and seven, I had to use the ratchet. And uh, 
I also had to use this swivel universal socket adapter. So I have them numbered and um, all the gaps are fine. However, when inspecting plug number five, first thing I notice is there's a lot of buildup. Hope you can see that. I think it's pretty obvious. Look at that. And um, seems a lot dirtier and, and kind of burnt than the other plugs. For comparison purposes, this is number seven. So I hope you can see the uh, the difference. One thing that I don't know if you can tell by looking at it like that. And that's why it's a good idea to always have your <clears throat> your tools handy so you can see what the differences are. All of these this is number one. Sorry, I keep getting out of frame here. It's right at 0 0.045, which is perfect. Number three, again, is at almost there at 0 0.045, maybe 44. And that's actually how they, uh, how they are gapped at the manufacturer, but that one is okay. Let's jump, to, let's jump to number seven. And again, it stops right there, almost right at 0 0.045. So one, three, and seven are fine. This one, and I know it's a little dirty, but still we're gonna to try to, to run this um, little gauge here. And the gap here, and I'm kind of forcing it there, it will not go beyond 0 0.041. So, this is why it's so important to double check things. You can see the obvious build up there. This is not gonna help an engine run better, quite the uh, contrary. And um, again, this is why you have to check, double check, triple check, whatever is necessary to make sure that all the components are set up properly. Otherwise, the, the motor ain't gonna run right. I mean, there's, <laughs> you know, it's gonna run okay, but things like, like this are avoidable. And again, the mechanic, the guy who rebuilt the engine, or actually the mechanics who, um, who installed the, um, the spark plugs, should have double checked this. It takes a few seconds. Heck, even if it's a, a few minutes, but everybody is always rushing, trying to get things done. And this is the, uh, the end result. So again, I'm glad I caught that. And one more little thing that I, that I noticed while I was removing the plugs is one of the boots has um, a split at the, you know, where it goes over the, um, the porcelain. It is not a big deal, but, and again, you know, replacing those things 
you have to pretty much remove the whole, you know, spark plug wire. And um, I don't know at this point what I'm what I'm going to do if I want to go through all that trouble. Uh, sometimes you can, um, you know, get get by by. Um, by using a, a plastic cable tie or something like that. I may look into doing something like that. It's a temporary fix, but I'm not ready to start replacing uh, wires as of yet. So anyway, it's that's why it's so important. I, I wanted to, to mention this. It's so important to uh, to check on things uh, as part of the maintenance of the, of the vehicle. Uh, these are older cars and even newer cars will, you know, can suffer the same, the same fate. Uh, there, there are no guarantees because a vehicle is new that is um, that is going to be um, trouble free. Stuff happens. I don't know if I can I can show you this boot here. If I can find it, there it is. And again, everything else seems to be okay, but this is not. So. You know, if you're driving in the rain or something like that, water can seep in there. It's not gonna, it's not gonna make things better. I am. Uh, I had some markings so I know which wires goes where. The other one is somewhere down there, and the boot is fine. So this is the only one that that split. Not a big deal, but I'm glad I'm, at least I'm aware of that. So, anyway. Um, I just wanna point that out. So, four done, four more to go. This side, of course, we have the uh, AC compressor. So we have number two back here and number three. Actually, these, these ones in the back may not be that hard to get to. It would be interesting to do them all from the, uh, from the top. But anyway, I keep on rambling, I know. Anyway, that's, that's it for now. Thank you for watching. Some of these uh, plugs are tighter and they're tighter than the others. And before you start doing some damage or something silly, sometimes the only alternative, which I know to a lot of you guys is gonna be like, no kidding, Sherlock, having a, some kind of an extension bar, this is from an old floor jack, allows you to really gently loosen pretty much anything. So again, I know this is basic stuff for a lot of you guys, but if someone is not aware of that, then that is something that is important to know. And once you just break it, that's all it takes just to break the seal. You can use your ratchet. This is that sound, it's like music. And voila, the plug is out. So there you have it. I thought I mentioned that because not everybody knows all those little tricks and you don't wanna start looking for a big hammer to do something that a little leverage will take care of. This one is a little, I mean, it looks fine, but it's a little dirty. So I'm gonna have to check the gap. So, but anyway, that's one little tip that I wanted to point out. Again, I hope it helps someone.
Alrighty. So here I have the one I just removed, number six. And again, it's a little dirtier and what is the term? Funky looking? I don't know. There's a lot of stuff in there that doesn't look right. So, and using my little gauge here, I mean, it seems to be, oops, seems to be right where it needs to be. I'm really jamming that in there, so maybe that's not the, the way of doing it. So, yeah, maybe this one also is a little bit in need of proper adjustment. Of course, it's going to be replaced. So, but again, you keep finding these little things that, again, do not help the, uh, the car run better, quite the, uh, quite the opposite. Alrighty, that's all I wanted to point out. Well, guys, they're all out. And as you can see, I, I like to mark them so I know what I'm looking at in the case of number five. I don't know if I'm, I'm going to blame that on, on the poor adjustment there, which was, as I showed you earlier, it was off by quite a bit. It doesn't sound like a lot, <laughs> but it makes a huge difference, apparently. And also that boot that it may be causing uh, a little bit of issues there. I don't think so. I'm going to blame the, um, the gap. Uh, there was another one that was a little bit... Not as bad, but again, the gap was off by a little bit. So, five and six are a little questionable. One thing that I wanted to uh, point out is, and of course my car is all, let me uh, zoom, zoom out of there, okay. Um, as you can see, my car is pretty, um, original factory, whatever. And uh, so I was able to remove all the spark plugs and I think I can reinstall the, new, or I keep saying reinstall. I'm gonna install new ones also from the top, which is, you know, I, um, I've i changed plenty of spark plugs in my, in my time and uh, usually you have to crawl under the car. But uh, fortunately this time, I was able to reach all of them from from above, which is great. Now, one thing that I have to mention is I noticed while I was, you know, removing the plugs, um, some of my older vets had little shields, and uh, this one does not have those shields. I didn't take them off. They're, they were not there when I when I got the car, and I never noticed that. And then when they rebuilt the engine, I you know I was I wasn't paying attention. Otherwise, I might have bought some used ones and you know and installed them. But what I'm trying to say is that maybe and it's a big maybe, if those shields were there, which fit right around the. Um, the horns here, the um, the exhaust manifold, and they help shield heat, I guess, to a certain degree from affecting the uh, the boots and all of that stuff. So my point is, I don't know if because mine does not have those, that I was able to do it from above. So, you know, if, if you're gonna do the same thing to your car, you may run into different issues. 
And again, a car that has headers is gonna be, access is gonna be a little different. So, you know, every car has its own nuances. So I just wanted to point that out because the reason I was able to do it is just maybe a fluke or whatever, but not every case is gonna be the same. So that's my caveat there for, for that, uh, when it comes to that. So anyway, again, the plugs are out. I'm just waiting for the new ones to arrive and uh, we'll go over how I prep them. We're of course gonna measure all the gaps, make sure that they're right at where they should be at uh, 0 0.045 and, and then I'll install them. So until then, again, thank you for watching. I just got the package from Amazon. I don't know what the heck they did in here. But let's have a look. Oh yeah. It's just dumping in there. So again, you know, these um, spark plugs have traveled traveled quite a bit. I don't think that's gonna be the uh, the right gap here. So a quick look. I mean they're bouncing back and forth inside these boxes. Oh yeah, these these things are just pfft. yeah. 0 0.025 that's why it's it's so important to um to check them and gap them before you install them let's see how we're doing here this is Not enough yet. A little better, but still ways to to go. there just make tiny little adjustments until you're there but um, So anyway, I'm gonna adjust each and every one and uh, we'll be back soon. Okay, so I gapped all the, all the plugs, the new plugs, and uh, they were all off. Not by a whole lot in some cases. Others were off by quite a bit. Anyway, before installing them, I like to prep each and every plug. And to do that, you're gonna need, and this is optional, I like to do it. So I, uh, I think it's a good idea. Anyway, you need a little bit of uh, anti-seize and dielectric grease so and I'm gonna do one just to show you what you want to do is take a little bit of the anti-seize 
and you want to apply that to the to the threads you don't want to use a whole lot just enough to lightly coat the threads and this stuff as you probably if you if you've used this before you know that it goes everywhere so that's that part and then what you want to do is take a little bit of the dielectric grease and you want to cover or give a light coat to the ceramic portion or the porcelain and just go around like this and that's all that's needed for that now you don't want to apply this stuff or anti-seize to the ends of the plug so those have to be left alone and clean and uh, but anyway then you can set that one aside and do each and every one of them all right so they're ready to go they're all coated with the dielectric grease and the anti-seize just a little bit goes a long way and uh, again I think I showed you uh, earlier the um, spark plug socket has a little retainer in there so that allows you to um, to move the spark plug you know put it upside down whatever and uh, and it doesn't fall out of there so that's a good thing to uh, always use the right tool for the for the job but uh, I'm using an old spark plug here for demonstration purposes one thing that um, sometimes is a little too big to get in there and, and start threading the, the plug. We've, we've done this for years, um, it's an old trick. You take an old small piece of a rubber hose or a vacuum tube and you just attach it to the end of the plug and that gives you, usually works well when you're working on motorcycles and you need to uh, get the spark plug started but it can also uh, work when you're working sideways and um, you just want to be very careful not to cross thread the um, the um, the plug because that'll give you a lot of heartburn for a very long time it'll cost you a whole bunch of money you don't want to do that and again all the plugs have been gapped so I am ready to go Well, this part here is almost impossible to um, to film because I don't have the equipment. There's hardly any room down there. So, but what I wanted to mention is once you get the plug started, you want to use your ratchet and just snug it. You don't want to go crazy because. Um, you're gonna damage something. Um, you just want it snug in there. There's there's no need to uh, really. There's no way to get a, a torque wrench in there. Uh, maybe a few spots. But again, you know, you just want to tighten it so it's fully seated properly. Of course, again, you don't want to cross thread the uh, the plugs. That can end up in a, being a nightmare. Um, but if you take your time and you just Snug it enough and then just give it about, heck, an eighth of a turn or whatever, 16, whatever. You, you know, you, you do it by feel. And uh, if you've done this before, you know, I mean, don't go crazy. You just want to make it really snug and that's, and that's it. And um, that's one of eight. So again, I, I, uh, there's no point in me trying to uh, film this because there's nothing really to see so anyway 
I wanted to add my two cents, so I'll be back once everything is is uh, is done. Oh, and also before I forget, once you um. Once the plug is in, you want to take the, the boot, slip it over the plug, of course, and make sure that it, it'll it kind of give you like a click um, noise once it goes over the, um, the top of the plug and uh, it's plugged in properly. It'll, it'll almost give you like a clicking sound. So make sure that, again, take your time, put the boot on, on top of it, and just work it in and then snap it in place. It'll it'll click. And um, you wanna you wanna make sure that they're seated properly. That's that's pretty much it. Alright. Alright guys. So it's all buttoned up. And uh, engine is cold still. Haven't started in a few days. Two days, I think. Yeah. I think I drove it on Saturday. Or maybe yesterday. I don't know. Anyway, so let's see what happens. I connected that um, sending unit. Oh no, it's loose. Of course, it's getting hot here. Ow. Okay. Ouch. Okay. So that is connected. I guess when I was installing the plugs, I knocked it off the. Uh, registering right away. Good. Honestly, it's it feels like it's running a lot smoother, and it should be because they're all brand new plugs now.